Good morning, Northridge family. We're so glad that you can join us today online. I know this is not what we expected or intended, uh, but Pastor and Paula and many others in our church are, are under the weather. They're sick right now that have tested positive, and so we must go and do a, a two-week uh, time period right now where we're going to be meeting online, so you can catch these on our YouTube page, on our on the church website, uh, the Facebook page as well is where we're going to be uploading them uh, directly. And so we hope that you can join us uh, today. We're glad that you can join us today. And then next week as well on the 18th, we'll also be here uh, online for you to watch in your homes. We pray that no one else is getting sick. We pray everybody that is sick is getting well and getting better. Uh, just note as well, our prayer times on Tuesdays and Saturdays are going to go online and going to Zoom. And so you can text me, call me, and I will make sure you are on the Zoom link uh, for prayer. And so we just want to just pray this morning before we get started. And we're so glad that you can be with us. And if it's your first time watching today, I pray that you can stick to the service. Just worship with us um, as a body of believers that we can worship together, even in our homes. And so we're just going to pray this morning, and then we're going to enter into a time of worship. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this technology that we can still gather together as one body of believers across this city, proclaiming your name, praising who you are, spending time in worship. We just lift up everyone in our church that is sick right now. We pray for a healing in your name, Lord Jesus, that each one of them is going to get better, have a full recovery, a quick recovery, Lord God, that no other people are going to get sick. We just thank you for today and this service that we're going to have. And in Jesus' name, amen. It's good to be here with you. I am so looking forward to this morning, excited for what God has here today. Jesus is so good. And just in practice this morning, just his presence, his nearness, his peace, his comfort, uh, just very evident. And so I just... And looking forward to being able to join together with you in worship this morning. We want to welcome everyone who's here. If you're uh, joining us for the first time, a very warm welcome to you. Glad that you are here with us, and uh, we're good to see you. And of course, still those still joining us online, uh, choosing to do that or needing to do that, we want to welcome you as well, and just glad that you can join us that way. Why don't you go ahead and stand? We'll go into worship this morning giving thanks and praise to our God and to our Savior, Jesus. Lord, we come this morning just to put our eyes on you, to fix our attention on who you are and all that you've done. Lord, to reflect on your goodness, your love and your kindness, your tender mercies, mercies that are new every morning. Father, we thank you for what you have in store for us here today. Let your spirit come and move and have its way in our hearts and in our lives. God, we desire more of you and what you want to do in us, what you want to do through us. God, let the joy of knowing you fill us this morning. Let the hope that we have in you, encourage us and inspire us, God, for the nations to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ, the hope that we have. So again, Lord, we give you this service, we give you this time, we give you our worship and our praise that you be glorified here today in your name, amen.
Jesus, we praise you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who has saved us, the one who has redeemed us. By your blood today we are set free. By your blood today we are redeemed to the Father, restored to the Father.
thank you this morning. We thank you that we can still gather together across this city and praise you, spending time in worship, singing songs, uttering your praises, Lord God, despite everything going on right now, despite this, uh, this COVID sickness, Lord God, despite uh, financial struggles, despite everything that's going on in our lives and lives uh, of our loved ones, Lord God, that we can still come together we can still praise you, even if it's online, even if we're in our homes separately. We're worshiping you together in one accord. And we say thank you, Father God. I pray that right now that you work in our hearts today. I pray that you speak to our hearts through this message of hope. And in Jesus' name, amen. We say thank you once again for tuning in with us, for joining Northridge online. We had to change things up again uh, to go online for the next two weeks. And so we thank you for your patience, uh, for your understanding, for um, your prayers, especially your prayers, those that have been praying daily, those that have been praying consistently for um, Pastor and Paula and, and the others that are uh, sick as well right now that are in desperate need of a healing. And so we want to say thank you for those prayers. We know that God answers prayers. We know that God hears your prayers. And so we want to say thank you. And also, if you are wanting to join in prayer on Saturday and Tuesday nights, just text me, let me know, message me, email me, whatever that may be, uh, and I will make sure that you are on uh, or have our Zoom link so that you can join in on prayer as we continue to pray for our church, we continue to pray for our city, and we continue to pray for our nation. And so we want to say, say thank you again for praying. Also, we want to say thank you for your tithes and offerings. As Pastor has been talking about recently, we've been able to add so many new missionaries during this time, this difficult financial time. We've been able to bless more missionaries, meaning we've been able to help more people that are taking the gospel to unreached people groups, to other parts of the world. We've been able to partner with them, bless them to be able to bless others. And we say thank you. And you can give online, as today you note, you can't give in the, in the little boxes at the back of the sanctuary. So you can go to our website, go uh, and give online that way. You can mail it into the church, drop it off at the church in the uh, mailbox if you would like. And that is totally fine. You just let me know uh, and we will make sure that we can get your tithes and your offerings and they will get put where they need to go. And so we want to say thank you for that. And so... Before we get started, let's pray one more time. So, Father God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We just ask that the tithes and offerings that get collected today via online or however that may be, we pray that it will be multiplied. It will be used for your glory to reach this city, to reach this world. Bless the gift and the giver. And in Jesus' name, amen. So this morning I began to think, well, this week I began to think about uh, what I was going to be preaching on and uh, to be preaching on this morning. And so I wanted to ask a question for everybody. And I know you can't raise your hands. I mean, you can raise your hand at home. Uh, and so I just am not going to be able to see those hands. But how many of you have ever been picked last for something? I know I have. I remember back to elementary school. I remember back at recess out on, uh, we had this... Um, kind of like a couple basketball courts, this concrete parking lot area at our school that was fenced off so cars couldn't actually park anymore, but we had a recess out there. And I remember playing kickball, and we played this weird kickball where there was one team that lined up on one side and another team that lined up on the other, and we kicked balls back and forth. And when the whistle blew, everybody had to stop. So at the end of recess, everybody stopped, and whatever side had the most kickballs behind them, they lost. And so the goal was to not have any kickballs on your side. And so we called that kickball because we just kicked the ball to the other side. And so, but I remember 
playing kickball, playing basketball, playing football at recess, playing baseball through elementary school and middle school. And I played basketball for one year in sixth grade. I was on the B team because I wasn't that athletic of a kid. I liked baseball. I played baseball. But that doesn't mean that I was that athletic. And now I like disc golf. I can just throw a Frisbee and walk. And um, it's a lot less athletic, in my opinion, than playing baseball or running or something like that. But I was on the B team, and I wasn't always picked first in these sports at recess. And you may understand that. You may get that. Now, there's some of you, you may have been picked first, or you were the one doing the picking. Um, but this morning, we're going to talk about David. David was picked, um, thought about last. And Have you ever wondered what it was going to be like to be David? Reading through the scriptures, reading about the life of David. And we're talking about like teenage David, pre-King David. So the life before David was king. David was always being thought about last, never being good enough, never having the right set of skills, never doing anything right. His family thought about him last. And so you wonder what even... Everybody else in their community thought about David when his own family didn't even think highly of him, didn't put him first. When Samuel, as we know, Samuel came to anoint a a new king and and Jesse put seven sons in front of him. Doesn't even think to bring David in. Oh, you're going to anoint one of my sons to be king? Okay, let me bring you these seven. He didn't even think of David. David was still out tending the sheep. But he was judged based on his size and his lack of experience, and yet he gave all the glory to God. He had his hope, he had his trust in God. Through all the turmoil that David went through, through all the peril that David had to face, he trusted that God would bring him the victory because his hope was in God. And so each of our stories are going to be a little bit differently as we face obstacles in life. We may face similar circumstances, especially right now with COVID going on and, and, and some people just financially in a bind because of that through this season, the last several months. And so there's simil, similar obstacles we face, but there's things in our past that are yet so different, turmoil and heartache and hardships that we've had to face that may look different. But the life of David has encouraged me to put my hope in Christ, And I hope that today that it can encourage you as well, that by the Lord, we can get through it because the Lord never leaves us, never forsakes us. He is always with us and he is faithful through it all. And so my question this morning is, where is your hope? Where are you putting your hope? And so let's go ahead and jump to our passage this morning in 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's a passage of David, I feel like, that gets skipped over sometimes. And for a lot of different sermons and teachings on David and over different aspects, I mean, David, outside of Jesus, is like one of the most mentioned people, has one of the the, the most chapters dedicated about his life outside of Jesus. And so we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting in verse 34. Now, it says, but David said to Saul, hold on, let's, let's skip up to 32. It says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been a fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord, who had delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, would deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Father God, we thank you again for this morning. I pray that you challenge our hearts. I pray you speak to our hearts. That today, if we have not put our hope in you, that today can be that day that we reevaluate our lives and we focus 
on you. And in Jesus' name, amen. So when we look back at David, David in this passage, he, he doesn't really take too kindly to the, the words of Saul. Saul tells him that he can't go and fight Goliath, that Goliath has been a fighting man since he was David's age, since he was in his youth as a teenager. And David is a teenager now and has only been a shepherd. So he doesn't take too kindly to the words of Saul, but he begins to stand firm. He begins to stand there and explain himself as to why he is the best candidate available to fight Goliath, to stand before Goliath. Goliath. See, David, yes, he was a shepherd boy. Yes, he, he was the shepherd over his father's flock of sheep. He was out in the fields watching them day after day, taking care of them, feeding them, taking them out to pasture. And I've never been a shepherd in that nature, so I don't know everything that he would have had to have, had to have done. But there were days it was probably easy. But there were days that we have just learned that was hard. His job was to protect the sheep. His job was, was to, to make sure that they all survived, that they didn't go hungry, that they didn't go thirsty, that he didn't lose any of the sheep. He had one job over this flock, to protect them. And he begins to tell King Saul that as the, when the lion and the bear would come, they would take the sheep. He would find them. He would rescue the sheep and he would kill the lion and the bear. But he, he begins to not say that it's just because of himself. If you notice, he begins to give the glory to God because his hope is in Jesus. His hope is in the Lord. And he's saying that in a similar way that God helped me have the victory with the bears and the lions, the things that are, that are probably a little bit smaller than Goliath, maybe not by much, but as God gave me the victory there, God will give me the victory with Goliath. It is through the Lord that I will have the victory. And size was not in David's favor. Experience was not in David's favor when he had to fight the lion, when he had to fight the bear, and it wasn't in his favor when he had to fight Goliath. But David, he knew how big God was. And even if there were moments where he was scared, or even if there were moments where he was anxious and worried, he trusted in the Lord every single step. He didn't run and cower to the bears and the lions in his life. His hope was in the Lord. We can't give up in the tough times. We can't give up right now in this time of our life. We can't turn our backs from the Lord. We can't just throw in the towel. God is with us. God will never leave us. And we have to trust that He will bring us through these hard times to help us face each and every day. James 1-2 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Hebrews 13, 5-6 says, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? We can consider it pure joy when we're struggling in these hardships. We can consider it joy, not because it's joyful to be in that scenario, but because our hope is in the Lord. Because we know in the hope that we have in Jesus, we can Consider that joy and knowing that Christ is bigger than our circumstances, knowing that the Lord is going to bring us through what we are facing, just as David understood that and his hope was in the Lord. Now, leading up to our passage here, in the previous chapter, in chapter 16, towards the end, we see a role reversal take place with King Saul and with David. And it's an, import, it's an important uh, it's an important aspect of, of the life of Saul and the life of David. At this point, right after David is being anointed to be king by Samuel, the, the Spirit of the Lord is withdrawn his blessing from King Saul. And now he is only king by name and position only. Because of his refusal to accept the Lord's authority, Saul has forfeited his right to remain the king of Israel and that is why the Lord sent Samuel to go and to anoint another. And so King Saul, as king, was, would have been expected 
to motivate and to not just motivate, but to lead his troops in the battle against the Philistines. He would have been um, encouraged to be the leader, to be out front, to take his troops into battle. But yet upon hearing the words of Goliath, Saul and his army seem fearful and helpless. And they find themselves locked in this stalemate with the enemy. But each day Goliath comes, they run back to their tents. In the face of Goliath's defiance, Saul and the army seem paralyzed. And I want you to imagine this for a moment. To really get this picture in your mind, I begin to think about what this might be. So imagine standing there amongst the army. If you can just even close your eyes right now and picture that moment that you're putting your helmet on, you're getting your sword on, and you look to your right and you see other uh, soldiers, they're getting their swords in place, they're sharpening their spears. You look over to the left and there's a few more soldiers uh, taking their last bites of bread and cheese before they're getting ready for battle. And you realize that nobody's saying a word. You realize that there's this eerie silence amongst the army and across the valley. It's just like a scene out of a movie. And, and you and the rest of the army, as, you're, as you've gotten suited up, your king is standing in front. And you guys are approaching the enemy. And then from a distance, you see these trees that begin to move. They begin to shake. You, you hear the rumble of the ground, the roar of the ground, and, and a man appears bigger than any other man you've ever seen. And you don't know what to do. You're, you, you freeze. You stop dead in your tracks. And then you hear all of a sudden from the back of the line, from the back of the crowd, you hear another soldier yell, Hey, King Saul! This is your kind of challenge. This is, this is a challenge for you. And you realize in that moment, everybody's looking for the king and he's gone. He's running in retreat. But something seems to strike you as odd. For 40 days, King Saul has been doing the same thing. Day after day, meeting with his soldiers, meeting with, with his planners, his organizers, the different people that, that strategize the plan of battle, looking for the weaknesses, looking to catch the Philistines off guard. Today we're going to the, the right. Today we're going to the left. And yet your king, head and shoulders above the rest, every time Goliath shows his face, runs and retreat. It was amazing how we deal in life so often with problems, but with every problem but the real one, the one that takes God to resolve. King Saul and his army were probably planning strategies to try to get around Goliath, to try to get a different angle so they wouldn't have to face Goliath. But yet every time he came out, it ruined their plans. They ran and hid because their hope the Israelites' hope, King Saul's hope, was in their swords, was in their armor, was in their own size, was in their abilities in battle. And when faced on with struggles, when faced on in our life with struggles, with battles, with sickness, with losses of a job, uh, I want to ask this question, are we putting our hope in ourselves? Are we putting our hope in our own abilities? Are we putting our hope in what the world has to offer or are we putting our hope in Jesus? Now we, we kind of transition over to David. And like I said earlier, David was anointed by Samuel. And when, when he was anointed by Samuel and the Spirit of the Lord removed the blessing off of King Saul, he placed it upon David. The shepherd boy now has the makings of being a spirit-filled spirit -filled leader. And he is motivated... First off, he, he, he's, he's only sent, his only job now is to take food to his brothers. And just by happenstance, I think this was a God moment, that God planned David being there at the right time to hear the words of Goliath. And so when Goliath is demeaning God, David hears it. 
And David now is motivated only by the impulse to defend the honor of the Lord. David, whose heart sees life from God's perspective, sees what has to be done. And yet, there is such a stark contrast between David and Goliath. I, we don't even know if he necessarily sees Goliath. He, he may have only heard Goliath at that first moment. I guarantee he then goes and he sees but he hears Goliath and he's motivated. And there's this contrast that Goliath is enormous. He's protected by impressive armor. He's got spears. He's got swords. He's got weapons. And he has his own shield bearers walking in front of him to have added protection from the enemy. And then we have David, who's described as a, as a teenager. He's described as handsome with fine appearances. He's not described as a warrior. David's main role, like I said, was to travel back and forth to take food to his brothers. Outside of protecting the sheep, he had to bring food to his brothers. And then in our passage that we read, our main passage there, David stands before King Saul, a king too afraid to face the enemy, a king not wanting this shepherd boy to face the enemy. And David, standing there, heart filled with a righteous Anger begins to explain how he is the only one able to face Goliath. To def not just face him, but to defeat Goliath. His explanation, it, it reveals his profound faith in the Lord. It reveals where his hope truly lies. Because yes, he talked about killing the lion. And he talked about killing the bear. But he said it was by the Lord. It was only through the Lord's strength. It was because the Lord was with him. This uncircumcised Philistine is no more frightening to David than the bear or the lion trying to eat one of the sheep. Just as David had rescued the sheep, so now he will rescue the armies of the living God. Just as God delivered David from the hand of the lion and the bear, he would deliver David from the hand of Goliath. See, David, in his mind, in his, in his heart, all enemies of God were reduced to the same level. None of them had more power than the other, and none of them had more power than the God who was with him. They hold no power over God's people, and regardless of their size, regardless of their strength, the Lord will provide the victory. David has moved from reciting his own bravery and skill to declaring the praises of the Lord, that God is his source of deliverance. God is going to help him have the victory. So where's our hope? Where are we putting our hope? That's the question I want you to answer this morning. David's hope was in God. And we see that strongly in this passage. We see that strongly in the life of David, as he's described as a man after God's own heart. David was not afraid of Goliath because his hope was in the Lord. His hope wasn't in his abilities. His hope wasn't in the army. His hope was in God. And it was such a contrast between King Saul and the army that their hope was in their own strength. Their hope was in their swords. And when their hope was in their own swords, there was an enemy that was bigger, that was greater than they were. And so they ran in fear. They knew that by their own strength that there was no way that they could win this fight. There was no way that they stood a chance at fighting Goliath. Because they looked to themselves for the answers. They looked upon their own ways. But David trusted the Lord and he placed his hope in God. And he had seen God's hand save him before. And so he knew that God was bigger, that God was greater and that no enemy that came before the Lord would stand a chance against God. Where is your hope this morning? Where is your hope today? Is your hope in yourself? Is your hope in your own abilities? Is your hope in other people? When our hope is in the things of this world, there will be a day in which those things will let us down that our own abilities will not be good enough. 
When our hope is in ourselves, when our hope is in the things of the world, we will be let down. We'll run in fear, run in cower like the Israelites. When our hope is in the things of the world, we will not have the victory. But when our hope is in Christ, and our hope is in the one who came to save us, there's nothing that can stand before us that can claim the victory. There's nothing that can be an enemy of God and win in our lives because our hope is in Jesus. And so because our hope is in Jesus, or should be in Jesus, we do not have to worry about tomorrow. We don't have to worry about next week. We don't have to worry about November. Because God is still on the throne today. God is still on the throne tomorrow. God's still going to be on the throne in November. No matter what takes place or doesn't take place. Or if our hope is truly rooted in Christ, we do not have to worry. David faced bears and lions before he ever faced Goliath. He learned to place his hope in the Lord in those moments. He learned that, that he had to trust God because there was no other way. And then, because he trusted the Lord, because he had his hope in the Lord, and God brought him through it, he was better able to face the next obstacle. Because in this moment, he is remembering back to what, the God, what God has already done, and it's better preparing him for what God is going to do next. Whatever you are facing today, whatever struggle you're dealing with, maybe it's a sickness. Maybe you're listening today and, and you're, you're one of the few that, that is sick right now. Maybe you're struggling with that. Maybe financial struggles. Maybe the loss of a job or, or a loved one. But today, I want you to take time to remember the hope you have in Jesus. Remember the struggles that God has previously already brought you out of. Remember the dependence, the trust you had to have on Him then, and it's going to help you today. Do not lose sight of the hope that you have in Christ. And if you have not placed your hope in Jesus, then today I pray can be the day that everything changes for you, that your life will have new meaning, that your life will take a whole new direction as you place your hope in the Lord and not the things of this world. See, the world will try to get you to think it has all that you need, the world will try and get you to lose sight of the hope in Jesus, the hope that you should place in Jesus. Now, right before, right before David, if you go a little further in the story here, King Saul, he, he offers David his armor. We find out amongst all of this, uh, King Saul being taller than the rest of the Israelites in the army, King Saul being bigger, having this armor that could protect him, chose not to use it out of fear, but he offers it to David. He offers it in hopes that it will help David. And we know that, that David ultimately didn't choose it, but he chose the familiar sling and a stone. And I began praying about this and thinking about this as I was studying this passage. And, and it's possible that King Saul was offering David his own armor to bind the two together in a way that King Saul could take the credit for the victory if David should have succeeded in defeating Goliath. See, the world offers us many things that looks appealing, that offers us a false sense of security, just like Saul's armor looked as if it could protect David. David knew that his hope needed to be placed in the Lord and the Lord only to have the victory. Don't allow the world to take credit for what God is doing in your life today. Trust in the Lord and in His ways. Psalm 62, 5-6 says, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock, and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. We as Christians should live in full dependence upon the Lord as our ultimate refuge and rescuer in times of trouble. See, the concept of hope, putting our hope in Jesus, doesn't just point to right now, but it points to a future time. It points to what we have in Jesus. Having complete faith in the promises of God that we find in His Word. 
holding on to the promises that we read in Scripture. The hope that we have in God will not disappoint. Opposed to when we put our hope in the things of this world. Today, as you reflect on past actions, on past things that God has brought you through, whether that be His, just, His working in your life, uh, something traumatic that happened that you realize that God helped you in that season. Maybe, maybe a complete and total healing. God just completely healed you. It was something you could not do on your own that you had to put your hope in Him. And then have confidence in the hope that you have had that you can continue to have on the Lord today. Peter writes this about our hope in 1 Peter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For this reason, Jesus Himself is called our hope. And we have, to, and we have access to His power through the Holy Spirit whom He sent to guide and to empower us. And Jesus, His saving work, will continue in our lives, making us confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So this morning, cling to that hope in Christ, that hope in knowing that one day, there will be a day that we will not have to worry we don't have to stress. We don't have to have sickness and pain and turmoil. But we cling to the hope in Christ for knowing that one day we will get to spend eternity with Him. That all the cares of this world will be gone. All the, all the heartaches, all, all the you know, thinking of so much that might or might not happen in the future in America and across this world. There's so much going on in the news. There's so much going on in our minds that it's easy to get consumed into fear and lose sight of the hope that we have in Jesus. So my prayer today is answer that question, where's my hope? Is your hope in Jesus? So Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. Lord God, I pray that today we can just be shaken. I pray that today you can shake everything that is not of you off of us. Father God, that, that we, we quit looking to um, false idols. We, we quit looking to worldly things for our hope. But we look to you. That we don't put our hope in our own abilities. We don't put our hope in things of this world. We don't put our hope in other people. But we look to you, Lord God. We put our hope in you. We trust in you that no matter what, through the difficulties of life, no matter through the struggles, just as David stepped before Goliath in knowing full well that he was smaller, but he, his hope was in you, and he knew he was going to have the victory. That, Lord God, that we step forth in this life through all these struggles that we are facing, through all the difficult moments right now, that, that it may not look like the victory, but as we put our hope in you, we can trust that we will have the victory because of you knowing that one day we will get to spend eternity with you. Jesus, we thank you. I pray over each and every person that's tuning in this morning. I pray over each and every person right now that you will touch them physically, you will touch them spiritually, you will help them to see your truths, help them to hold on to your promises. We pray over pastor and everyone else that is sick. Lord, we pray for a healing to take place in their bodies, for a quick and total restoration that COVID will, will be gone out of their bodies. And those that are sick with, with other ailments, for, with cancers and, and just the common cold and, and different issues, we pray in your name, Jesus, for a healing to take place today. And everybody that's watching and the people and our loved ones, those that are, are tuning in, our neighbors, I pray for a healing across this city and across this world. And in Jesus' name, amen. Guys, we're so glad you can join us. We hope to get back soon. We know that, like I said, next week we'll be online as well. And so you can be looking forward for that on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, um, on our website. They're always uploaded to our website as well. And so you can tune in to that. I pray for you guys right now. And, and shoot a text out. If, you, if there's somebody you know that's sick right now, shoot a text. Text them, say, hey, we're praying for you. Hey, we love you. Hey, we're here for you. 
um, just encourage someone in the Lord today. And also, quick announcement, if you have kids, because we know on Sundays we've been doing kids' church, so if you are watching and you have kids, then stay tuned. We're going to go into our kids' church as well. It's at the end of this video, and so if you just stay tuned, it's going to be on here in a few moments, and your kids can enjoy some time um, with Pastor Angie as she brings forth the word for your kids. God bless everybody.